So what's going on social media land tool groupies, do-it-yourselfers, average everyday Americans. Today from the Backwoods Hippie Garage, which you can find on Facebook, I'm going to be changing what is called the oil filter adapter, which is on this Chevy Uplander van. This is a 2007 model Chevy Uplander. These vans have got a really bad issue with leaking up in the front of them, and people sometimes can't find out where the leak's coming from. They'll change their filter. They'll tighten their filter a little bit too tight. They'll tighten their plug, all that good stuff, and it's the adapter sometimes. So what we're going to be doing is changing that today for this lady, and I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. i got a little bit of everything going out here. Got my Task Force, got my ATD, got my Stanley, got my gear wrench, got my Craftsman. Got a little bit of everything over there. But here's... What your gasket is going to look like. Picked it up in CarQuest. Cost me around six bucks. So I'm going to take the filter off. And this should go right in behind that filter adapter. And it should stop the leak if that's the problem. So let's go ahead and show you what I've got started so far. Now the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is get your vehicle jacked up off the ground. And of course, you're going to want to have jacks and jack stands. Jacks and jack stands. I got a six ton big red and I got a cobalt, another cobalt, and a cobalt jack stand. Now, essentially, and I'm using my Nebo Slide King flashlight. These things are great, folks. Okay, what you're going to be doing is taking your plug off right here, draining your oil, of course. That is a 15 millimeter plug. Then you're going to need yourself an oil wrench for this model. It's the smaller of the oil wrenches. You turn it to the left, get it off here, and then you get to this point right here. As you can see, though, let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. As you can see, it's really wet all through here, all up and under the undercarriage of the vehicle. There's where your oil filter goes. I already pulled it off here, let it run out. Everything's soaking wet. Now, a lot of people get confused by that, but that's because whenever you're driving down the road, the wind and the fans are going and everything, it blows that oil all over the place. 9 to 10, it's usually that. If not then we will just have to fix this up for that lady and see if she wants us to go ahead and uh, take everything else apart, check the gaskets, overhead, valve covers, all that stuff, make sure there's nothing more serious going on. But once you've got to this point, first thing you want to do is let all the oil run out real good, make sure everything's secure, your brakes are on, all that good stuff. Then you're going to take a rag of some kind and you're going to start cleaning everything up so you're not going to be really, really oily and you're going to be able to see what you're working with and... You know, chances are you won't slip that much on something. You know, clean all that stuff up. And the reason why I am doing this on the ground also is because that's what I, I want to do. I want to be able to help people out. I want to be able to show people what and all is going on. Because if anybody watches my channel, uh, I'm the Backwoods Mechanic. I do a little bit of everything, folks. I contract out my skills to do industrial work, to do automotive work. I do mobile mechanic work when I'm called upon. I do all this stuff. Plus, I do carpentry work, woodwork anything and everything just you know everyday hustler that's what being a backwoods mechanic's all about being an american's all about living the dream doing a little bit of everything so uh if i can help somebody out by showing you how to do this yourself with the basic tools you ain't got to have snap on or sk or cornwell or any of that stuff you've seen i got a little bit of different everything out there some of it's got lifetime warranty some of it ain't got no kind of warranty and it will do just fine to do these kind of jobs as long as you do it right now, of course, what you're going to also need is you're going to need, you know, your socket sets, some wrenches. You probably need you some swivel head adapters and stuff. You're going to need some uh, pliers to take these hoses off because there is hoses attached right there on that little arm. don't know if you can see it or not. We'll have to pull those off there because it could be those hoses leaking too. You never know till you take it apart and look at it. And always remember, get yourself some safety glasses or, well, sunglasses if you lost your safety glasses because they're just a dollar at Walmart. And then you can get started. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose to get some things ready that I might need. I'm going to go ahead and get your basic pair of pliers. These are task force, just in case I need them. I'm going to get my basic pair of needle nose pliers, nice cheap stuff. And uh, I'll use these and then I'll get my sockets and everything. Whenever I get started there, until then, I got my basic set of sockets right here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and show you all what we're looking at. As you can see, that's where you put your oil filter on at. Now, that plug tap also goes inside of that harness there. So that will screw out. It's leaking around the sides of it right now. And what you're working beside of is your starter. So you have to unplug the battery because when you stick your ratchet and stuff up through there and you hit that, you're going to get a shock. And you don't want to ground nothing out, tear nothing out of hell. So 
best to be safe. Save yourself some money and pain and go ahead and unplug your battery terminal. And then one bolt is right in behind where that wiring harness clips in at. Can't see what size it is, so I'm going to have to go by feel and try different sockets. And then you're going to need a swivel head, which is where the Pittsburgh Pro Mini Ratchets are going to come in hand at. Or the Tech Correct Pro Flex Head Ratchet is going to come in hand at. So I can take that bolt off of there. And I can pull that wiring harness down, get down my way without having to pull this whole starter off here. Now, just for forewarning, people, if uh, I have to stop the video for any short period of time, I might have to make a part two. And I will upload that as soon as I can. But that's just in case the video cuts off here because uh, it might take a minute to clean this up and see what all I need. I know there's a plug in the back side right there. It should be about three bolts on here all together to get this thing off but we have to work our way around everything to get started so definitely unplug your battery terminal and it will be a 10 millimeter don't bump any of the metal whenever you're taking it off here give you 10 millimeter now we're going to have to find out what size socket it's going to be behind that wiring harness which is why i've got this pittsburgh pro Little stubby flex head here it's going to help me get in behind all that stuff if i can get in behind it with that if not i've got this tech correct pro this is a really good lifetime warranty product also you can pick up from car quest or advanced auto it's going to run you probably 30 dollars, and it's a really good item also shallow head you can fit in tight spaces it's got a long handle on it works really really good for these jobs and it ain't going to cost you a whole bunch of money if you're a do-it-yourselfer now you'll have to pick your sockets up that you got Feel around in there and behind everything to see which one fits the best and go from there. But I want to show you all a little trick. There's this little plastic guard right here. And if you take it off, all right, take those bolts off right there. You'll be able to at least see back inside here, which helps just enough to put an extension and your sockets and ratchets and everything together and help get these from a different angle. And of course these are 10 millimeter, but as you can see these little stubby ratchets come in handy even for something like this You don't necessarily have to have an extension because these little flex handle stubby work wonders Then you work it out back and forth pop that off here And you'll actually be able to see it a whole lot better as you can see right there is what you're looking for There's the fasteners there's the lines, you get a clear shot, and you can also do that if you're going to replace your oil sending unit the same exact way without taking apart a thousand different things. Now for those of you who don't know, the little wiring harness right there with that little clip in it, that is your oil pressure sensor, all right? That is exactly where you got to go to to change it. you got to have a special socket to get to that. But you can pull this apart and get to it without taking apart a thousand other things. Same exact concept with everything else. you got to think smart. Look at all your options whenever you're doing this type of work. And you can fix whatever you need to fix. And speaking of which, looks like this lady seriously needs to uh, change her lines here soon. Because rust is horrible right there. That's horrible. So for this, I'm going to use this ATD tool set. I'll put a link in the description below for the tool review on this. 50 bucks, cheap set, made better than a lot of the stuff you'll see on the market. Now Duralast does have a nice set like this. They do get a lifetime warranty from AutoZone, 50 bucks also. This is what I'm going to use for this job, just to show you don't need nothing fancy, nothing expensive, just your basics. And our winner is a 13 millimeter to get that first fastener off. Now once you get that fastener off, you just pull that little wire and harness out of the way and then you'll have more access and room to see what you're looking at. Alright, now for sure, the fastener right there underneath where that oil sensor is. And there is one above where that oil sensor is. And then, you've got another one way back in here on the left so that's three for sure possibly just from looking at it that one right there that hooks up to your uh i think the ac system oh man i hope that one don't have to come out i don't believe it does i think there's three and that's it so i'll get started here and we will find out 
Now one thing you might possibly need will be a 10 inch extension and it wouldn't hurt to have a 6 inch extension and a swivel head just to make sure you got plenty of room to reach inside and give those things some torque to get them out with minimum problems. Now this is the 10 inch extension as you can see it goes right back through there right on the other side and hooks to that fastener and then the other one will be the one up top there to get a hold of but all together a 10 inch will work real good and you'll need at least the swivel head for the one on top now you can see i've got the swivel head it'll take you a minute to get it adjusted just right to get it on top of that fastener and then loosen all three of these up so that you know it's getting loose because you're going to have to line them up exactly right whenever you get that gasket and get it ready to get put back on there. So I have left the hoses attached so it'll help hold it there and it won't just drop everything out on me. Now I have got all three of those loosened. And let's see. Now that's the right three bolts. So now we know how to take them off gently. Then we'll see if we can put that gasket on there without even removing those hoses. Now whenever you get the top one loose there, that's why these things, these magnets here is handy. Because you can easily get your bolts, your fasteners, whatever it is, you can pull them out. And it'll also help you line them up whenever you're ready to put it back in place. Now the one on the top and the bottom there was the exact same size. You can see right there. But this one, the one that had that harness on it, it's imperative that you put it back in place because it is the long one that mounts up. But now she is loose and all that's holding her on there is the hoses. We'll let the oil finish draining out right there and then see if we can get into the gasket while the hoses are holding it. We'll be able to pull it off, scrape it off hopefully and be able to put the new one on and put it back together. As you can see, I have pulled the adapter away number of the adapters right there uh, but the gasket see where that orange is it's right there so because it is on that part of it I will be able to pull it off put the other one back on identical to the way that one is and then fasten everything right back up just make sure everything is aligned the way it comes off now the old gasket if you can see it right here as you can see it's pulled apart so that's where it was broke at and here is the brand new gasket. It is identical to the other one. Shape, size, I made sure the parts and everything lined up so we should have no problem taking that off, putting this one back on. You can see, get a closer look at it here. This one is wore out. It's wore around the edges on it. It's wore on the inside. Gasket materials broke loose, so it's a good chance that that's the majority of our problem. And hopefully this will fix it. Now, always make sure before you put the new gasket on, though, that there is absolutely no debris, no nothing in the way up there. Take you some cloth, dry it off, take some emery cloth, sandpaper, and, you know, sand it if it's got anything shady in the way, anything prickly, any type of gasket material has to come off before you put the new one on, or you're just uh, causing yourself more work. And also inspect that hose back there, because the hose that's on this left side here... The only way you can change it is whenever this thing is took apart. Because 9 of 10, the rubber that's around this, it's going to rip off if you try to pull it apart. So you might as well just take it off there. Go ahead and get a new line. Put it on while you're servicing this. That way you won't do it again in the future. You know, or go ahead and just check it and make for sure that it's not leaking or you'll be turned around doing it again. And this one it seems to be dry. It's not got no bad cracks. So I'm going to put some... Uh, belt dressing something smooth on it so it stays nice and lubricated won't crack maybe this will solve our problem now the first thing you'll have to do is take the longest bolt go ahead and feed it through there and hold the adapter with your other hand and then go ahead and stick it all the way through the adapter and then you're going to put the gasket hole through that bolt and then you're going to get everything in position and you'll have just enough room to align this thing you'll have to wiggle it and move it a little bit Get it in line, make sure it stays in place, and once you get that one started and snugged up just a little bit, don't tighten it. Then make sure your other bolts go in and that everything is lined up before you start tightening. And then all you got to do is tighten all this stuff up, plug up your harness to the last fastener, go ahead and put your oil filter, all that stuff back on, put your oil in the vehicle, 
plug your battery back up, turn it on, make sure it ain't leaking, and then you're done. And once you get everything lined up, you can double check yourself because you take a flashlight and you can see the gasket, you can see the holes, and you can make sure everything is lined up for sure. That is going to be the most difficult part about this job. And then just put everything back together. So I'm going to finish this up and we will see. Now the most difficult one to get in place is going to be the one on top. So do it last. Use your magnet to put it up in there and then take your extension with your swivel head and you'll be able to work it around and get it on there and then start tightening it up. Okay, I got everything lined up, got everything tightened up. Make sure I didn't torque it entirely too much, but I tightened it up just tight enough to where I know it's putting the gasket in the right place. And I put this on here nice and tight, and I turned it a few times with my old wrench. I know everybody says hand tight, but whenever you're at a shop, you don't want to risk somebody's car blowing up, so you always want to tighten it up. Now, after I check, put my oil in it, make sure nothing's leaking, hook my batteries up, I will come down underneath this, and I will spray all this off with brake cleaner, dry it off. That way, whenever the lady's driving it down the road, we will know in a few days whether it's leaking or not. But if you want to see more repair videos, do-it-yourself videos, more from the Backwoods Hippie Garage or the Backwood Mechanic channel, then just subscribe or follow me on Facebook for tool reviews, for do-it-yourself stuff, and a little bit of everything in between. Until next time, I'm the Backwoods Mechanic saying I'll see you then.